Now, if you're just tuning in, we're still discussing money, morals, and millennials. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waysho Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 um, So thank you, um, Patrick, for staying with us. Now, somebody is uh, Pascal. <laughs> oh, sorry, Pascal. No problem. So I'll some, find you. Oh, please do. <laughs> so someone is sending me a question. The person says, Uwa, will a child that is brought up in a good home ever think of scamming or cheating? Do we need to blame our government about that? So this question seems a bit... Um, it's dicey. Dicey. No, what I think she means is that the family is the building block of a character. Yeah, okay, maybe Pascal should answer, answer, she uh, answer the, the person sending the message. Yeah, thanks for that question. So I, I made a statement earlier, which is that you know, when we are growing up, our first behaviors and actions are actually what we see and imitate from our parents, our guidance, our teachers, and the people that have the privilege of raising us. When we become adults, we've been built to an extent, and then we have a very limited amount of chance to fix some of those things. But guess what? It is still changeable. So back to the question around, um, you know, uh, like what roles do our parents play in all of this? I'll give you a typical example that is very normal in Nigeria. Um, most parents, not all now, um, some parents will, you know, muster the guts and determination to pay for their kids to sit for exams at special centers. Mm. And these kids know, they're not stupid. They know that this is not where I'm supposed to be, but mom and dad can afford this. And that child gets into the university. They haven't earned the admission. Now they are in the university because they haven't earned it. They are not sure, you know, of what it means to labor, work hard and get good grades. They explore other means to get these grades. And then they are done with school. They face the reality, either going to look for a job or, you know, starting a business. And then the reality of the challenges of the system begins to hit them. Now, you see that the fabrics of how this person has turned out has been, you know, heavily, you know, orchestrated by how the parents have, you know, pushed them forward. Now, at age 15, 16, a child is already exposed to that level of corruption. Hmm. It becomes a very difficult conversation to convince that guy or that young person that they can embrace better options in the future because their, their parents have already normalized wrong behavior. So parents do have a very critical role to play in how, you know, we turn out. Some of us are, you know, we're lucky to have parents that they will beat your head if you misbehave. You know, for those that did not have that opportunity, all hope is not lost. Even though you have some work to do to remove that, it is still doable. There are people that came from extremely dysfunctional homes who are living incredibly beautiful lives today. Mm. So we shouldn't push the, the blame. Parents must have, you know, not done a great job. The government might have, might have failed us also. But we shouldn't fail ourselves. And we shouldn't fail our kids and the generation that come after us. You know what? I definitely this is this is a commentary, and they're all this is all my thoughts. I definitely think that there is something the baby boomer generation got wrong. I think that the the baby boomer generation, which is um, I parents. think our parents, yeah. yeah. So growing up, they grew at the point where there was a lot going on in Nigeria, right? I don't know, perhaps I could say for the eastern part of Nigeria, there was just so much going on. People were in pain. There was so much hurt. And the mistake they made, or part of it was, they didn't heal that hurt. So they ended up raising kids that they almost had. It was like we were clueless about raising kids. And so that is, like you mentioned, Pascal, you mentioned earlier about us not having role models, right? So you look at marriages these days, it's falling apart. Unlike our parents' parents, our grandparents that had their marriages together, they had their work-life balance together. No, but they so would tell you, Sanzi, I'm sorry, I need to cut you, but they would tell you that those marriages, they were just enduring things. I mean, it, it didn't seem like um, they were having a good marriage. In your opinion, you thought they were having a good marriage. I but most of them, question. most of them were just enduring and patching it. And the, the, patching the, the it. Grand, our grandparents, I don't think they were just enduring the marriage. No, no, no. However, no, no. our parents, I think a lot of them were enduring Sounds the, the, the Sounds marriage. Like that's which, the whole 
different, different can, can topic, you know? topic and time. Okay. <laughs> That's a completely different topic. Because let's not even go in. Because there. if we go let's there, we will not be here today. I'm telling okay. you. But, but you know, for, for, um, um, if Pastor can hear me, I think, Pastor, can you hear us? Okay, I think no, I can't. I can't hear anything. Oh, really? Oh, okay, okay. I think he, he cannot hear us. I will we'll um, try to we'll try to link up because with Pascal. Because Sans, you don't yeah. even start that conversation about our grandparents if they enjoyed their marriage. Mm. Are you joking? Well, you see, how, how many you guys women at that time? I made all the points. How many women at that time had ambition? Uh, the ambitions we have now. Mm. How many of them? Okay. Most Quite of them. A lot just... of them were ambitious. Don't, don't listen. My grandmother, she was all up over the place. She she may not be as ambitious as going to the office, but she was. A, 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 what about a, the intrigues of life a now? A rich trader, like she would sell, go to the farm. She had her life together. Farm. So she was working. Farm, I got, yeah, farm, farm. is work. Would you go to the farm? farm? No, but no. farm is That's work. I'm saying that. So the work-life balance was easier then. Mm. Not now that you have to drive three hours to get to work. You come in back but, three but, hours. But but I think yes. I, let I, us go back to okay. the topic. Yes. You know, we say money, we say morals, we say millennials. Can we have it all? You know? That's the question I would like to ask, you know, Pascal. For as millennials, can we have both? Can we have the money? Can we have the Oh, morals? definitely. Quite a number of I people agree. doing very well. No, millennials, the, yeah. The reason I'm asking this question, yeah. right, you would, see, you would see some people, you know, say that, oh, this person is on Forbes list, um, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, maybe two years down the line, <laughs> they, they will come out to say, you know, this person had... Uh, but but, fraud but we need to understand that, that that is not really... That, that no, so that's where I wanted... Okay, so Pascal, I think you're back. Can you hear me now? Yeah, Claire? very well. All right, so I was saying that, can we have it all, you know, as millennials? Can we have the high moral standing and a lot of money? Because we need money. Trust <laughs> me. We need money to make a lot of things happen. So can we have it all? And if we can, how... Okay, so that's that's a symposium conversation. Um, the, the how I mean. So yes, yes, we can we can have it all. But the the, the biggest question would be, um, I think the, the focus should not really be on how much money we intend to have as people. Yeah. The, the question should really be, what are those things that we need to do and put in place to ensure that the money comes? The, the chase should not be for the money. So the reason why I'll be I will not be the best person to talk about how can we have a lot of money is that um, I work for, I've worked for different banks. And, and the only way I understand how people make a lot of money is to work for, you know, very high profile companies that pay you so much, or you start a business that create value for society and you generate money from that. that. Those are the two ways I understand. So if you want to make a lot of money, you know, find a very high paying job, embrace it, do it for a very long time and retire rich, or start a very, you know, good business that can create value for society. And then through that, you can create money and a lot of it as you grow. Those are the two ways I understand uh, how to make money. Now, every other method which involves um, things that I do not understand, I cannot really speak so much about that. In terms of having it all, yes, you can. But my, my advice and focus would be, uh, why, why don't we aim for, uh, if, we, if we choose to be entrepreneurs, let's go ahead, build businesses that can add value to society and make money through that. But we shouldn't lose ourselves in the process we shouldn't lose you know the basic things that matter most in life you know, like joy and peace and happiness a good family you know good friends and relationship you know making the world a better place like those are the things that i think our country in nigeria needs more we don't need more rich people in nigeria nigeria has a lot of rich people i told a friend in canada that we have nigerians who have more money than bill gates and that's the truth but the country is desperately you know, in a very, in a very unfortunate position, and it is currently the world's poverty capital with all the money that people have in Nigeria. So the focus should not be how much money do we need to have as individuals. We can have money if we do the right things, but the focus should be: can we live those lives that you know aspire to the higher ideals of life? And that is how we can make our, our lives. Yeah. Okay. So we have questions. I don't know. This person did not send their name. Um, it's a very lengthy one. The topic should be how. We got to this point in the first instance before knowing how to get out of the situation. He said there's so much lies that has been peddled to the endangered demography. Now, in bracket, he puts 16 to 35. Now, the truth is catching up and 
every uh, and um, every hell is now let loose. The millennial generation become bedeviled with the ha, quagmire, quagmire, because of the old folks, and it's really sad for them. And that's why there's so much confusion <laughs> as to which way forward. I think this person is just giving a, a little opinion, up, you know, but um. But do you agree that we should go back, you know, because the person is saying something about going back. Okay, the, the factors that to triggered. The fa factor that this. triggered it. If we say, okay, what are the factors that triggered it before we even find the solution? What are the factors that triggered where we are today? today. Who's okay, you're asking me what cost where we are today. Yes. I, I wish I was there to, to know and tell you, but uh, unfortunately I wasn't. But from everything I've read uh, and understand so far, how. Um, a country like Nigeria, you know, got to where we are. I think there hasn't really been a deliberate effort to make the system work. And when I say making the system work, I'll give you a simple example. Um, you have a young man who makes 150,000 Naira salary every month. And then all of a sudden, 5 million Naira hits his accounts. And no one is asking any question. The bank is not moved. They're happy that the money came in in the first place. Uh, this young man goes ahead to buy whatever he wants to buy, leaves it with a flashy light. No one asks any questions. So there is actually no system to track, um, you know, behaviors that are abnormal from top of people's normal trends. Um, secondly, a young man comes home with so much money, um, a big car, has built a big house for the mom in two years, and the person left the house broke. The mother doesn't ask any question. The father doesn't ask any question. They are happy for him. And if you say anything about how did he get his money, people will unleash on you like this. Hmm. So we've gotten to a point where we don't question how people make money. Um, the one that successfully make it, there is no hmm. you know, audits or accountability in the system to question all of that. And then because just these two things happen, more young people want to embrace those behaviors because they will never be punished and they will be celebrated. We have had a perpetuity of this behavior over time, which is what got us to where we are now. And right now, what we are dealing with now is beyond a crisis. So we have a system where there is so much pressure on young people. They want to, you know, marry and have very huge weddings, even if they cannot afford it. So people, it renders them broke after that. They want to drive very big cars that they cannot afford and drive on bad roads. Think about it. So people are under a lot of pressure to live a life that appeals to what society can applaud, whether that lifestyle is questionable or something that can be audited, no one really cares. So the system does not track, punish, or bring people to book. So if it continues this way, these habits and behaviors will go on. Hmm. Okay, I think... Uh... <laughs> but also, I well, think that um, we've lost our reading culture. I think that if we can encourage more reading, mm. it will broaden our minds mm. and makes us more intellectual. And I think this will be reduced to Honestly, a minimum. So quickly, I think Sandy. the millennials are like the largest and most educated. No, I think I, mean, the, I think no, more quickly. Culture. I what, think what, millennials. Education is different. Think, what do you think we should be looking at? You know, going forward quickly. We have one. Let me let me, I, let me ask something. Let me ask something. There are there are so many. Um, successful, um, you know, people that have built their wealth and their lives, you know, through very legit means in Nigeria. There's so many of them. They're scattered all over the place. Now, the problem is that you never hear these guys talk about their wealth. They don't flaunt it. They don't use it to oppress you. And because of that, the media does not really capture the existence of these people. But they're all around us. If young people like you and I can find this people, they are all about us, they are in our, our mosques, they are in our churches, they are in our offices. You know, we see them every time. If we can move close to these people, these are people that are also part of the baby boomer generation, but they survived it and they've made very good decisions. Why don't we embrace these people and have them, you know, hold our hands and walk us through this very turbulent situation we have now. Awesome. We will be able to make better decisions. I'm talking about mentoring. Awesome, awesome. I think we can wrap it up there. Thank you so much, Pascal. We would have to bring you back. It's always fun when we are... I mean, it's all, the time is always short when we are having fun, fun. on right. the show. So thank you so much, Pascal. Thank we you. really ran out of well, time. But quickly, 
you know, um, Sanzi, one minute. Oh, yeah, tell us, tell us, tell us. Um, I agree with his, what he said last, getting a mentorship. It really, really, really even if they, are, they mentor you from afar, read about them, study them, and let go of social pressure. Social pressure is just a lot of unnecessary headache. Yeah, what were you And for me, I think family and school has a lot to do with it. Building the capacity and character of the children mm -hmm. from when they are young, when they are still impressionable, mm -hmm. so that we don't have the problem when they grow old. All right, so thank you, Pascal, for your lovely right, show this evening. Now, please, Bye. watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at We Show Africa, at Plus TV Africa, as we continue to hear what you're saying. Thank you to everyone that sent in messages. People wanted to call. They've been calling today, but we can't take calls, just messages. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Money has no moral opinions. Abraham Palowski. Go and learn about it. I will not tell you the meaning. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye, ladies. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah.